Uh, I had a house in the Hamptons, very close to the beach, and I used to spend my, you know, summertime. I was very nervous doing nothing, lying in the sun and doing nothing, so I was always observing, you know, whether uh, closed eye vision, if you close your eyes, you're looking at the sun, you're looking at the pretty interesting imagery comes out. Or the way the waves, you know, wash the sand and retract, and you have all those little holes that are coming out, etc. So I started making a series of paintings, which I refer to as my dot paintings, with that subject matter of flux and reflux. One aspect I, which is important in the work to come, was the relation between micro and macro, you know, because the, you had the little holes on the sand, but they also reflected uh, the universe in another dimension. And that aspect was also very uh, important in the work, the later work as it developed. In 91, a hurricane hit the island and uh, I went to take a walk on the beach and you couldn't walk because it's completely, completely covered with starfish. And the image was quite impressive. I mean, it was kind of amazing looking. So I picked up a few of them, took them home, dried them up, stuck them on a little canvas, painted on top of them, put them in a guest bathroom in my house, and forgot about them for like six months. And one day I went there checking things out, and I thought, well, maybe there's something there. And I started working with the starfish. Think of the starfish as a, you know, the five branches, the pentacle, the pentagon, etc. You can also go back to the origins of arabesque geometry, which emanated from nature, and that idea interested me. At first they were monochromatic, then the paint started piling up, then I started using powdered pumice, mixing it in the paint, which made the paint very matte and gave the impression that it was dry pigment, which I like. And then, unbeknown of my, me, I was stumbling into fractal geometry. So let's say at the, at the beginning, I had no intention, there was, it was not an intentional move. It really was an accident. And the accident came by the fact that I was not interested in copying nature, per se, but imitating the way nature proceeds. And this is how we ended up with those paintings. And it was kind of like a Pandora's box because they functioned on several levels. And one aspect of it that to me is very important is the, <coughs> the uh, optical aspect of the color in the paintings. Because you're working on a, almost on a bare relief and uh, it's not up art, because up art is Euclidean geometry, but there is a lot of uh, uh, new things that are happening with the color in those pictures. The scale can change, but the, the module is the same and keeps repeating itself. You know, it can keep on going. Uh, so it's not, the image is very much like uh, a Big Bang Theory where everything keeps, the universe keeps expanding, 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 so no limit. You can only limit it by the, by the frame you're giving it. You know, the, so I can make them 30 centimeters by, by 25 centimeters, and I can make them six meters by, by four meters. It's not, doesn't, uh, it just takes more time.